the life of the paladin is one defined by its oath, a promise of the highest caliber which dictates its life's mission. It's not something to take lightly, as the repercussions of this decision will echo across the paladin's every motivation. This challenge is not for everyone, and it takes immense dedication and resolve to follow through on. Within Dungeons & Dragons, there are many paths a paladin can take, which will be formative in its design. In this video, we will be crafting three paladins using the color pie, as well as discuss the core color of the class, the color you will most often associate with the paladin. After all is said and done, I guarantee that you will be able to build more interesting characters using this system. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the color pie yet, as these videos are designed to be easy to follow along with, and will leave you inspired and curious to do your own research. Before we get into that though, I just want to say thank you to my wonderful patrons for their support, and extend a special thank you to my newest patron, Just Josh and Bro. Now, with all of that covered, it's time to take a knee, pick an oath, and get into the colors of the paladin. There are many paths that a paladin can take when building your character, and yet the defining feature is its oath. I don't always like to place the subclasses so upfront in these videos, but in the case of the Paladin, it's so core to how you build your character that it can't be ignored. I'm not talking about stats or spell lists, but rather the motivations which drive your character. And in the case of the Paladin, the oath is at the heart of what makes your character who they are, even if that oath is broken. All of this factors so heavily into your character's design that we will be placing the oath up front and making it a key feature in building our character alongside the color pie. So what common thread do we see across each paladin, no matter the oath? Well, save for the oath breaker. Well, those key features, which will decide our core color, is that of dedication, discipline, and moral absolution. The paladin, no matter what it chooses to focus on, is a character who devotes its life to a cause, more so than many other classes, whereas the class in most cases is supplementary to the character, it's the opposite for the paladin. They are their cause, and every action they take reflects the oath they have chosen. These key features tell us a lot about who the paladin is, and what its core color would be. A color who is also defined by these same descriptors. I know that before I even reveal what the color is, my longtime fans probably already have an idea in their mind, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's first take a look at the color chosen by Wizards of the Coast in the set Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Pulling up the card, we can see that they have chosen white, and this is one of those cases where I wholeheartedly agree. As I said, each word used to describe the base of the paladin describes core aspects of white. We saw white show up in our cleric video, and yet both represent different sides of the color. For the cleric, this color denotes service to a higher power, and white's proclivity to gravitate towards religion. In the case of the paladin, it keys into ideas of strict morality, resolve, and justice. White is the color who often works in absolutes, seeing the world as black and white. They hold themselves and the world around them to a code of conduct, often through laws or judgment. White sees the world as a chaotic place needing saving, even if the receiving party doesn't always agree. White, and to an extension the paladin, is shrewd in its outlook and enacts its ideals as the literal and only law. This can lead to both truly heroic and selfless characters, or that of authoritarian and oppressive ones. I believe that the paladin can be built in both ways, even through oaths which are outwardly facing as good. This absolute mindset and devoted nature is why white matches so well with the base idea of the paladin. On the surface, the paladin or white may seem like simple colors and characters to use, and yet you will come to see that there is a lot of nuance that can be found, and I believe the color pie will help us express this. So let's get building. To start off, I want to take our core color and add in red to see what sort of paladin we can create from these colors influences. 
An act of cruelty from another can have a lasting effect on a person, coloring their view of the world around them, and vengeance to them can seem like the only outlet for such emotions. Not just vengeance on those who did them wrong, but against all who act with hate towards others. It's an act of violence against those who do wrong to the weak, and judgment handed out is this character's only recourse. What I mean is that there are those who are acted upon by ruthless external forces who are unable to stand up to such aggressors, and the Oath of Vengeance Paladin is there to fill that role, by being that act of recourse for those unable to do so, placing fear in the heart of those who bring fear to others. In the case of our White Red character, they had felt the hand of an evil force mar their view of the world around them, and vowed that such horrific actions should never go unpunished. They found that the sword, shield, and divine magic were tools they could use to enact vengeance on the behalf of others, for those who could not stand up for themselves. They now see themselves as judge, jury, and executioner. This outlook and life have hardened them with an unquenchable resolve. You see, a traumatic experience at a young age can harden a person, and such is the case of this version of the Paladin. It isn't some oath based on irrelevant concepts, but rather an oath sworn in dark times, one which defines this character's life thereafter. White in this regard is the expression of judgment and justice, justice on the behalf of others too weak to stand against the darkness of this world. The issue here is that justice is blind and can be dished out when it's potentially not appropriate. This can add a lot of nuance to your character when playing them, in that it can affect their empathy when it comes to actions it deems as wrong, creating a character who isn't a simple do-gooder but rather an unwavering hand of retaliation. Red in this context is the anger which is bred through our character and their chosen oath. There is a rage which is inherent with vengeance, whether it's justified or not, and this can mar our paladin's view of the world. Whenever we create our characters, we want them to be complex, and faults such as these can breed that complexity, and lead to moments that some paladin role players might be afraid to tread, and yet using the colors present, their hand is forced. As you can already see, the paladin can be dynamic in its motivations, when we take a look at what could lead to such oaths, and how those could be played out in our campaigns. Now, let's try something a little different here and take on an oath which would lead to a paladin who is outwardly good in many aspects of its design. To do this, I want to remove red and add in green. An oath can be taken not just as a way to uphold justice and to punish darkness, it can be brought forth by a love of life in all forms. It's a desire to kindle the light present in the living, to bring hope into a dark world, and to protect that life at all costs. In the case of our green-white paladin, it's a love for nature and its beauty. They see signs in the faces of the flowers, the voice of God in the songs of birds, and a vision of a better world in the clouds. This character, one day overwhelmed by what they saw, had an epiphany. It was them who was destined to stand as a shepherd for life. It was their calling to be the one who would take a strong position against the cosmic chaos which aims to break this perfection. And it was on this day they took the oath of the ancients and set their lot in with this order of paladins. Taking their sword which once was no more than a lump of sharpened steel and presented it up high with purpose. If we look at the intersection between green and white, we'll find ideals such as the upholding of life and tradition to be shared. White will do what it can to stand against darkness, and to defend that which cannot defend itself, while green wishes to see things grow, and appreciates the beauty found in all things. This ancient oath is one which has been upheld by paladins for as far back as the first elves. The Fey or Green Knight has always stood for the land and its people, and because of this tradition is a strong feature in this version of the Paladin. Once again, going back to our colors, we know that tradition and the upholding of the old way 
are pretty common among both of these colors. In these ways, our character devotes itself almost religiously to all that is good. And in the case of this character, we don't really have a need to add any edgy motivation. Feel free to allow your character to be positive, happy, and to bring out the best in others over themselves. But now for our final rendition, I want to do something drastic and shed both of these colors and bring in black. Because yes, white is important to the paladin and its oath. What happens when that oath is broken? One can devote their life to something bigger than them, only to become jaded by what it stands for. A just hand can see that their actions have little meaning and turn against who they once were for a path more in line with the cruel realities of the world around them. In the case of our character here, they fought for many years to be that hand of justice, striking down what they viewed as the evils of society, only to turn their back on what they found. As to them, it was a foolish endeavor. They had the best of intentions in their youth, standing blindly against what they felt was evil and yet found their blades stained by the blood of those who didn't deserve it. This darkness built up inside of them until it changed them forever. On one such mission, after purging a village which had grown infected by the undead, they no longer believed in their mission and fell into darkness, casting off their oath and their last bit of humanity. I think a character like this can be tricky to play as it requires utilizing accumulated trauma as a mechanism for your character's decisions, but if you're up for the challenge, then there is some amazing role-playing moments you can conjure up. To get a full idea, let's discuss the color that is at the heart of this character. In a rare case for our supplementary character designs, I went with a mono color, and one that opposes our core color. This choice was very deliberate. For one, to break one's oath, it would obviously put it at odds with the core color decided on earlier, as it's the opposition of ideas which white and black hold that make this character who they are. With white being a color of collective responsibility and justice, and black being instead the color of individualism and moral relativism. Where white places its purpose into the hands of a higher ideal, black places its purpose solely with itself and its own desires. So in this way they shed their oath which bound them to a higher ideal. An ideal they found to be a lie, and in this way cast their trust completely into their own hands. Now of course the rejection came with a steep price and now they push back fully against everything their previous oath stood for and have become something of a villain themselves. Now that we've built a few characters, let's discuss each of the colors and how they can be used in relation to the paladin. That way you can mix and match to create your own. Remember, just because we laid out some characters doesn't mean that there isn't a lot more that can be done, even if you are utilizing some of the colors and oaths I've already mentioned. To start, let's just briefly touch on white. To best accomplish this, I'm going to do something I haven't done in this series, and I will reference the alignment chart. Ah uh, yes, that thing I told you to abandon in place of the color pie. Well, it does have its uses, and I think I can illustrate something by doing so. At the heart of every paladin is the core alignment of lawful, something you could hardly escape. Because in many ways, an oath is a law you have set to be the focus of your life. Now, of all the colors, there is one who applies to lawful the most, and that would be white. So just in the same way you would make your paladin almost always lawful with some combination of good, neutral, or evil, it's the same with the paladin. Place white at the heart of your paladin, and then add colors on top of it to drive its motivations further. Speaking of other colors, what about the one color missing in all of the examples so far, blue? Blue is an odd color for the paladin, and one you won't see too often, but it can still be present in some cases. In the case of the blue paladin, we would be talking more about a logical view of justice and law, rather than one based in morality. It's a logical path to a better world, something we talk about when discussing what values blue and white share. Then we have black. This color will often reject an oath, 
in that an oath to uphold the ideals of something else goes against Black's wish to focus on one's own needs. It can have trouble doing things for others unless they truly believe in it themselves. In another way, Black can be used to add a layer of ruthlessness to a paladin who does follow an oath, which can have dire consequences, as their actions would be total and unwavering. The next color is one I could see you using pretty often for the paladin, and that is red. As red adds a level of fanaticism to any color it is paired with. There's something which happens to red when it's aligned with another color, in that it takes on its pair's ideals with a level of obsession not seen anywhere else on the pie. The oath becomes more than a sum of its parts, it becomes a total identity in the presence of red. Finally we have green, a color of life and tradition in the hands of the paladin. In a lot of ways, you could take this color as the core to your paladin, depending on their motivations, and it would fit perfectly. The paladin of green acts to uphold the traditions of the paladins who have come before them, as well as uphold a love of life. As you can see, the paladin is a lot more complex than a simple-minded do-gooder. I challenge you to build a character who doesn't quite fit into traditional paladin tropes. The key to making an engaging paladin is to pick your colors up front, then take those motivations found in those colors and focus on what would lead them to take an oath, and finally pick an appropriate oath for your character based on your previous decisions. If you take this path, I'm confident that you will create a more interesting and engaging paladin in the process. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Class Colors series of The Paladin. Now it's time for your side of the discussion. I want you to go down into the comments, craft me a short description of your paladin, what their colors are, what their oaths are, and how they all blend together. Let's get a discussion going. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to hit the like button because it lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're new here, then consider hitting subscribe because there's a lot more quality color pie content coming your way. And with that friends, I will catch you in the multiverse. Bye.